Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be a show match, which I hear is a really fun one, between Machine, who you can catch streaming on Twitch at Twitch. I think it's Machine USA. Might be USA Machine, but I'm pretty sure it's Machine USA as the Purple Zerg. I would just, you know, I see Machine on there, I just click his name. He's fun to watch. He's a really... Pretty much everybody agrees the nicest guy, except for G5, who demands that he's the nicest guy in all of StarCraft. Which, I like the tenacity, the aggressiveness. I will be the nicest guy in all of StarCraft. Machine's awesome. Uh, works for Twitch. Has really been around the scene for a very long period of time. Met him at SoCal Land 2. And again, I always have to, in my heart, I always end up rooting for him. So I might be a little bit biased in this. But another guy who I root for quite often, and who I think is on the ascent, is Nesh. And he is the yellow terror in the bottom left hand corner. And Nesh is getting really good and honestly I think looking to kind of terror start terrorizing the scene we'll see seeing his play recently he's really been someone who I yeah I just see it's got that he's got that kind of energy about him right now where it's like I'm really figuring it out I'm really got that determined focus and I'm kind of energized with everything and so I'm almost expecting good BSL runs and other things I have not seen him stream, but he does kind of bum around with 80s Mullet, Machine, G5, those streams. So oftentimes if you catch their streams, you'll see them doing King of the Hills uh, where Nesh is involved when they're streaming. Although they've been streaming a little bit less often, Machine is scouting the upper right-hand corner. It's going to be a little bit delayed from his scout. Barracks being plopped interior to the base for Nesh. And yeah, it looks like Nesh also scouting upper left-hand corner first. And now the drone scout is going to, at cross positions, be able to sneak in this base, see this initial barracks being plopped down. This is on polypoid, 12 hatch from machine. And a second overlord going to take that additional position. I also have to thank both these guys, because as I was starting, as I was like gearing up to do play CPL, they were like, here's the build you need to practice. And I started practicing that build. Uh, I think the build's still a little advanced for me. But I should talk about standard meta these days once again, and you'll probably see it executed here which is for Zerg, it is oftentimes getting going 12th hatch Muta, getting enough Mutalisks out, and maybe even sometimes level one weapons, depending if you want to switch it into kind of an all-in Muta attack, which is something I actually want to practice. That, that's from my end of play. If you end up playing me on ladder, you'll know that's exactly what I'm doing, is I'm trying to practice my Mutalisks to get decent with Mutalisks so I have that weapon, which on a side thing, I feel like that's almost the problem foreigners have compared to Koreans because Korean, you don't have to worry about the land latency. And I'm almost wondering if certain players have opted to actually adjust and go for more, okay, we're going to go Hydra builds and things like that because Mutas and lag is just brutal. Nesh going for a barracks with a single Marine into command center, more of an economic build on the opposite side of the field. And Machine, I think he moved that drone in and moved it right back out. Or I missed the drone kill. Did I miss a drone kill? I don't think I missed a drone kill. Yeah. Plopping that overlord down. I think Machine knows what he's going to do here. Three hatch Muta, actually. I take it back. So usually what you see... Well, not Muta. We'll have to see if he goes into three hatch Lurker. Two initial Zerglings being produced to try to chase, uh, chase this SCV scout down. But that SCV does see that hatchery inside base. So actually, we might see a press away from that standard meta I was talking about. There might have been a shift recently that I've missed. This is why I like seeing these guys, because they tend to be on top of things. The single drone doing its own, like, spits. I spit it, you SCV. Pah! The biggest insult. I think the SCV is going to be... Is he going to be able to escape? He should be able to escape and get back home. But anyway, previous meta that I saw was usually this third... Usually a straight 12, uh, two hatch Muta. And then establishing a third base. Maybe it's because it's polypoid. And a third base with gas is hard to defend here. And then what Terran have been doing is they've just been going standard medic marine. Uh, going for m and Things like that. But it's been difficult for Terrans to deal with that build. Specifically because the early lurkers, the early lurkers, the early defilers, and the defensive posture of Zerg has just made it, and particularly on a lot of these maps that have the ramps at the third bases, wow, Nesh still scouting. So send in another SCV, still getting all sorts of information. Critical. So sees the lair, he might, and sees the timing of the lair, and second gas being plopped down, by the way, and Hydra is then, okay, so we are seeing Hydra. So it's going to be three hatch Hydra. So probably some form of Lurker build rather than Mutalisk on Polypoid. And I'm wondering, again, if that has to do with just map feature or if it is, in fact, a meta adjustment or if we're going to actually just see also a Spire being plopped down. So no, Creep Colony, defensive, just in case there was... Uh, which is necessary, honestly, while waiting for the Lurkers to come out. Lurker tech being researched. 
Engineer being plopped down, level 1 weapon, second barracks. And Nesh in a pretty commanding position. Well, actually no one in a commanding position yet, but I feel like Nesh in a pretty good spot, because he got all of that scouting info. Might even get more scouting info. Is he going to sneak in? And Okay, almost able to sneak in and get additional scout. Almost saw Hydros being built there. But we are going to see Lurker Tech out from Machine. And usually what that means is he's going to have to play more of a ground army, kind of out on the map, flanking sort of thing. You want to try to sneak down and pin and nail. That first Medic Marine Ball is usually your primary concern, looks like the... and making sure that it doesn't absolutely wreck your base. A couple of Zerglings scouting out on the map, trying to provide a little bit of threat. And yeah, usually off of that, what you want to do is you want to try to establish additional bases. I do like the Lurkers on the ramps as well, because you can kind of plant... And this is where... Again, have that previous build I was talking about where you can, and this Overlord going to float in and try to get scouting information on the front. I'm wondering if Nesh is going to move out. He's, wow, two bunkers. So he got this scattered out. He's like, okay, I think this is going to be a Lurker Link flood rather than a defensive Lurker sort of build. So he is playing preventative. It's a little bit of mind games going on here. So he's like, okay, Machine, this is the thing is this is my bias of Machine in my head where I'm like, Machine usually doesn't go for cheesy builds. But I have to say, Against any other opponent, that is should that is what you should expect when you see early lurkers like this. Is that you're expecting like a big sort of aggressive flood of medic marines. By the way, machines plop down a hatchery in the upper right hand corner of the base. So I think Nash was a little bit concerned. Is still plopping down. Yeah, getting that turret up defensively just in case uh, all goes awry with the initial uh, lurker ling. But machine now in a nice defensive position at least on his base. And wow, this is kind of interesting. So. Okay, he has using lurkers to defend across this high ground, and I don't think this can be. Th this would be amazing. Oh, he needs to burrow them though. Still not burrowed. I think does Nesh have eyes in it? I think Nesh scanned it, and yeah, definitely does now. And Machine needs to burrow. If he does not burrow, ah, oh, Machine. Okay, now they're down. Good kill. Okay, he should be able to hold it there. Almost disaster for him though. Okay, now able to replant. That was risky. SCV wandering out. Maybe trying to get a look at this third and getting uh, killed from there. So this is interesting. This is an interesting adjustment on that same build. So rather than relying on Mutalisks to try to get the established third, Machine is relying on Lurkers, which actually are easier to defend with, bluntly. And then he's just going to skip Mutalisks altogether and go for the, I assume, Spire Tech, Defilers, things like that. Zergling's kind of scouting out in the field, just seeing if he has a second Marine Ball bringing its way. And also, because of the threat of Lurkers and that all-in potential, it does keep Terran kind of on the back foot. You can see Nesh is very worried about some sort of counter. But here's the thing. In the mid-game, as it approaches, this will be nice with Firebats in it at dealing with those Defilers. And it'll slow down any sort of ball that's trying to crash uh, in on things. But this is more... Even though this is kind of a cycle round, this is working back towards that same sort of meta where we're seeing, um, actually Spire as of yet, probably to get those Scourge up in the air, deal with the Science Vessels. Nidus Canal being planted. To, and this is the, that mid-game Zerg, the, the more popular mid-game Zerg I've been talking about. We have that Nidus, you have Defilers, you have Dark Swarm. This is a lot of Marines on the natural expansion. And they ooh, might be able to micro against this. Zerglings engaging when they really needed to wait for, those, that, for them to be in Lurker range. The curious thing for me in the background here is, is where are the science vessels? Double starport being plopped down, but no science vessels to speak of as of yet. Now the science facility being produced. And so, so it looks like Nesh realizing he's a bit behind in that science vessel count. And that's going to be the key for him in the mid game, opting to plop down two starports to try to catch up in that overall count. But Machine is already sitting at hive tech. I feel like he's just in a commanding tech position. He's getting that carapace upgrade. He's got defilers. He's got consume working. He's got this upper right hand base established. He's going to be able to have his third gas momentarily, which is exactly what Hungry Hungry Zerg want. Plopping down additional hatcheries. And he's going to have, critically, that crackling upgrade. The uh, adrenal glands, which is going to allow those Zerglings to be even stronger under that mid-game Dark Swarm. Factory floating forward. For Nesh to provide scouting information and even though Nesh has been able to hold this front door and keep any sort of units flooding out from that position these Zerglings have been out in the field to kind of provide additional annoying harassment and Nesh still hasn't been able to establish a third base and I think part of it is is I'm not sure that he's like okay well how do I react against this I don't know that I can really do much without the science vessels and this is where the drones this is the other advantage drones can kind of you can build the drones here plop them in the Nidus Canal 
and reinforce where you need to. A couple Scourge moving out. And this is going to be an interesting timing. These Scourge might be able to sneak right on top of these if they just move right across the map. Looks like instead they're just going to sit as a defensive posture against any sort of drop, potential drop, or any science vessels that are looking to do some irradiates. Nesh plopping down some additional barracks. So I think Nesh is planning on just sitting on... So actually cutting production to do this as well. Just sitting on these bases, pressing the base a little bit forward, kind of testing the front door, getting a couple free zerglings as a result. But Machine also getting plague, and yeah, now Machine can just start moving. Yeah, he can just start slow moving across the map and establishing additional bases. <clears throat> Keep in mind these zerglings with this Dark Swarm are a scary combination with that Adrenal Upgrade. And yeah, you got level 1 weapons, but that means nothing with this Dark Swarm. So Nesh just being slowly pressed back. Nesh taking kind of a desperation hidden base. Upper left-hand corner. <clears throat> Interesting play. And using this factory to scout since there's no anti-air. But I feel like Machine is in a commanding position at this stage. He's sitting on all the tech he wants. He's got the gas he wants. He can really kind of bully this this force around and honestly the science vessel count is a little is very low for Nash to be able to deal with this in fact I don't see any science vessels anywhere and I'm almost wondering did I miss them getting killed and just losing that initial attack force so Nash having to play in a very defensive posture a single hydralis being produced that's gonna send that factory away Nash transfer is getting a free transfer a nice escort just in case there were some units there's a one or two lurkers here that would have been really sad and scary though and machine continuing to just do what Zerg does best. Slow macro expansion. It looks like the two science vessels sitting at the natural expansion just in case there was an all-in. You can see that fear of that counter all-in with those lurkers and the, the map position that's possible. The counterattack that could be out in the field. And that... Oof, Dark Swarm. That is a critical thing in these matches is when, when Zerg has this tech, if they end up on top of your main, that is game. If they can establish a Lurker Contain or just flood that natural expansion, that can be all she wrote. Radiate, poor Zerglings. Good Plague, though! And that is both going to drain the... So it depends. Okay, good. So this is a bit of a trick you can do, by the way. You can take your medics, you can pin them on the Science Vessels, and that keeps them from losing all of their energy. That is what Machine has done right here. Learn that one from Artosis. But that is going to leave these Marines weak and potentially vulnerable if there's some sort of counter-slip attack in the interim. A little bit of a pro tip that I absorbed from someone else. That's what I like to call expensive information, where you say it once, but you really can't again. Nesh, though, look at it, look at his macro. Beastly macro, sitting at 137 supply. So despite Machine able to sit, moving some Scourge up just in case, and just plopping a couple Dark Swarm. And Defiant Death. <clears throat> Ugh. Neither of them land. And now the Marines being pulled off and they're gonna go ahead and heal up. Thing is, is once they are pulled off the science, once the plague is expended, they still spend a lot of energy getting those medic Marines back to full health. Machine wanting to get a little, uh, getting another plague off and was able to plague the science vessels, which is gonna open up the potential for Mutalus. I still feel like this is a teeny science vessel count for Nash. Are there other science vessels out that I just don't see? <clears throat> Machine losing some Overlord someplace. So putting him in the red. Good plagues though. And that plague is going to force Nesh to play less aggressively, getting some factories because he want because this is the thing. Now Machine has that Ultralisk Cavern. He's got that Ultralisk armor upgrade, which means he can start producing. You guessed it, Ultralisks. Nesh has this fourth base established, and he's got you know a, a good force to deal with that. But this is late game Zerg, and late game Zerg Dark Swarm. Zerglings, Ultralisks, more Plague. Wow, we're lying on... I wonder if this is just the shift in the metal now, which is just ignore Dark Swarm, just continually level those Plagues to keep, make it so these Medic Marine forces are actually a liability. Nesh needs to hurry up and get Siege, take, siege Tech and Tanks, able to say that, out. Realizing he needs to do some economic damage, he's going to try to sneak out with this drop, and that is mostly going to be un... unmolested. This is, yeah... No Defiler to drop Dark Swarm to disrupt this, so might get a lot of drone kills. There is a single Lurker doing some disruption there. Yeah, able to wipe out that natural. <laughs> Here's the one thing that is in Nesh's advantage, though. Nesh has a huge supply advantage. He's at double, nearly double the supply of Machine. And he's sitting on a lot of bases. Sitting on a lot of bases. Good comsat. He might be able to take this hatchery out. Where are the reinforcements? Drone pulled off the line. Some Overlord's getting killed. Zergling's just coming in piecemeal, and this is not going to cut it against this attack force. 
So yeah, I think Machine might end up losing this hatchery, and that's exactly what Nesh needs. To I think he actually might have an overall. I'm gonna say that Nesh is moving into an advantageous position with double. So despite the tech of Machine. Oh, I take that back. Then I see the big boys move in, and all bets are off. All bets are off. Plus the speed upgrade. So just as I was about to say, like, Nesh has all the supply and things like that. Another drop here in the main. Like, looks like they're ramping up, but they are going to be greeted by the worst <laughs> greeting squad ever. Scourge also taking out the dropship. That's... These are the squads I feel like novels are written by. It's like, we, we're doing what, Commander? You're dropping us where? It's like the opening to a book. Where it's like Zerg are overwhelming and powerful and things like that, and there's just nothing you can do against them. It's like, yeah, we got dropped after already attempting a drop, and our commander was like, yeah, that's gonna work, and then Scourge destroyed us. Anyway, this is what we wanted to see from Nesh more science vessels softening up those Ultralisks out in the field. Let's see if they just dive on those Medic Marines now, because Green Cloud uh, Ultralisks actually peel through Medic Marines faster than standard Ultralisks sometimes. Thus, usually what you wanna do is be able to soften up those Ultralisks and then walk away. This is a big attack force on the front door. A huge threat from Nesh. And I don't see the... Okay, let's see if this... Is this all... Yeah, there's the boys. The boys moving in from behind. And this again, it's like out of a Zerg novel where they're just showing off how powerful and overwhelming they are. Two Ultralists trying to defend the front door, but the rest of the attack force sweeping in from behind. And it's like, oh, what is that thing I hear in the background? Science vessels trying to save themselves with some defense matrix but I don't know that it's going to be enough. Those Scourge diving into them looks like one will survive but these Ultralisks just running over this attack force and I missed it. Battle cruisers being built but they are separated from this medic marine force so I think uh, with enough Scourge they will be taken care of momentarily. This is going to force Machine to spend gas on Scourge rather than Ultralisks which is really what you're looking for out of those battle cruisers. They're not exactly, I mean this isn't a counter obviously. But, whoa, that is a lot of Ultralisks diving in. And this is where those bunkers, once again, are going to be... So even though they were built earlier, they're still valuable. If the Defiler was here, imagine that. So actually, I think Nesh is going to be able to clean this up. As crazy as that seems, I think he is going to be able to clean this up with the linebacker Marines. He's got level, level 3 weapons. Some siege tanks out in the front. Yeah, and he has been able to soften that up. More Zergans trying to flood in, but and this is scary, and maybe not SEVs on top of Ultralisks instead of Medic instead of medic Marines, which is what you want to see. I thought there were going to be more Medic Marines reinforcements to finish that off. The factory getting wiped out, the natural is breached. And the Ultralisks continuing to dive in and wipe things out. Just a flood of reinforcement, but also upper right-hand corner, Machine might need to pull back with these Ultralisks because there's a siege tank Medic Marine force diving in. To Machines Natural, the supply count has even. It looks like these Ultralisks are going to back off to try to flank these siege tanks. And once again, this hatchery is under threat. So nice counterattack that is going to basically save the game for Nash. Keep Machine out of his natural expansion. And now Machine might be in trouble again. If you look at the banks here, Nash is ahead. And this, uh, even though the meta has been kind of a little bit disruptive, it looks like he's going to be able to clean up this attack force. Even though the meta has been disruptive, it still holds... I think the logic still holds that when Terran has even bases that they end up with the Medic Marine primary force being more efficient overall. Nesh is now establishing his fifth base, although his main is mined out, his natural is looking thin, so it's just three mining bases, but and Machine do, is kind of mi still mining. But Machine has just now established that three o'clock base. And look at this science vessel fleet. This is so many science vessels moving across. And this might be the thing that can swing things. If Nesh can get on top of... And it really comes down to who can get map control. Because if Nesh can swing out, catch these Ultralisks exactly like this while they're out in the field, not engaging on top of Zemetic Marines, irradiate them, soften them up, take care of these defilers, and maintain map control that way, then he will end up winning this match over the long run. But the moment that Machine can get some Defilers and Ultralisks and just start the flood on top of natural's, Natural Expansion, more radiates, killing, it looks like, to take care of those Lurkers on the front. So Nesh actually deciding he wants to be aggressive. He's going to plop in and try to take out these mining bases. If he does take out these upper right-hand bases, that will be game. That will be, that will be game. Ultra is softening up once again, but it is in range to dive on top of those Medic Marines. And now pushing in with the rest of the Zerglings. Good engagement running up the ramp. Science Vessel's trying to pull back, and it looks like that Medic Marine Force is going to get wiped out. Hydralis trying to press on top. 
hoping some of these were earlier plagued and it looks like I think the I'm not seeing any science vessels that were plagued so I think these hydralisks might have been able to take a handful of them out I'm wondering if we can pick off a hydralisk that got a kill in here someplace either they got hit by a scourge at some point but point being the weakened ones with the plague earlier have been taken have been dealt with both players backing off to kind of lick their wounds and regroup machine might be in trouble here because this is a lot of production he's behind in supply He's, I still feel like it's up to him to get something accomplished. More dropships raining out. This is going to be a drop on the natural expansion. A single Hydralisk there to try to cope with this, and that is not enough. And here's the thing. Ultra Boys are fat. They can't get behind there to deal with this. So it's just going to be... Yeah, look at them running around helplessly. This is... This is the other part of the novel where they're like, we cleverly sat behind the line and watched the big beast walk back and forth. But the Hydralisk with focus fire actually... Wow. How? With focus fire able to wipe that out nesh using that distraction to try to dive into the natural expansion simultaneously but machines on top of it moving up with reinforcements with the ultras with the hydralists and everything else pushing in a defense matrix on that forward tank is machine going to continue to dive in this attack force i think he has enough enough of an army to do it the hydral look that defiler sorry pushing up is he going to get a dark swarm or a plague off here dark swarm on front of those siege tanks and a good play catching three of those science vessels Able to once again wipe out that army, but there's another group of medic marines that's going to try to sneak in underneath. It looks like there are a couple units that were able to slide in, but getting repelled. And I think that might have just been medics sneaking into the three o'clock base, going to try to wipe out and cut off that critical gas supply because Zerg live and die by gas, and they are being unabated. But the high oh, a couple hydralis getting a little bit too aggressive and pushing in. This base might get taken out. Nice counterattack by Nesh. Looks like a single Zergling trying to stop that 9 o'clock base in, in the meantime. And that hatchery has been peeled away. Another drone is going to be in here to, to immediately reestablish it. Canceling those eggs so he can quickly get that base back up and running. But this is going to give an opportunity for Nash. I think he's going to move up and try to do an eraser drill while all the units are distracted in the upper hand corner. There is a single Hydralisk. Oh, never mind. It's moving away. That's not good. Machine is planted at 6 o'clock to try to disrupt some mining right there. This is turning into an interesting late game macro positional play match from both players waiting for their race to sneak in nesh establishing that nine o'clock and a single battle cruiser trying to wander around and looks like he's going to try to disrupt that natural expansion mining right there so i think this is going to be another two-pronged attack where he's going to move in with his battle cruiser force some more scourge to be built and while he does that yeah dive in and do the eraser maneuver with that distraction good play from nesh i like that and there's yeah there's no and i don't think okay machine does see it so good reaction time, but still going to end up losing at least a handful of drones. And he's going to lose a lot of drones. That's five... Or sorry, Zergling's getting wiped out here by this battle cruiser. Scourge finally able... And this is actually almost like a waste of Scourge. Because it's only a single unit. Let's see if these Hydralists are going to push up and get it. Uh, come on, Hydralists, you can do it. But this nice economic disruption... Okay, I think the Hydralists did sneak up and get the kill there rather than the Scourge. Battlecruiser still with 11 kills completely able to disrupt the natural expansion not that it was mining a ton but machine saying now is his moment despite being behind in the supply count looking for a counterattack is now thinking better of it and you can see all of the reinforcements streaming across the map from Nesh both players gathering up for a large engagement in the middle of the map Nesh has the overall superior supply count and I think the overall economic advantage once again because again even bases usually even bases usually means plus he's, keep in mind this natural's uh, been disrupted, usually means that Terran is doing A-OK. -okay. Nice plague. Good positional play from Machine between Dark Swarms and Plagues, pushing Nesh, Nesh back into his natural expansion. Plus this plague really going to make this army soft. Yeah, you can see the irradiate from this Ultralisk rather than the actual attack killing these Marines. I like that. I hadn't thought about that. Plague plus an irradiated uh, Ultralisk and now you're one-shot killing a Terran with his own units now sitting on top and this is now where it becomes like the natural expansion but keep these siege tanks are going to do work on the high ground this is really scary and I'm almost wondering what do we need to see here maybe some mutalisks maybe we see a mutalisk counter to try to breach that that is a very strong defensive look at these siege tanks this is really hard to breach for a machine even with swarm even with plague second battle cruiser in the natural expansion still not being dealt with and this hatchery might get taken out as Machine still has not dealt with this. 
He's looking for, it looks like he's trying to regather his army. I think he's thinking about a secondary location to attack, but is he just going to let this hatchery go down to these battle cruisers? Single Hydralists. Looks like he's just going to focus fire it, but while that's happening, Zergling's diving into the inside six, wiping that out. That is a huge medic marine army that is going to clean that up very, very easily. Science Vessel's going to get on top of these Ultralists to radiate, and this is action all over the map. Ultralists easily being wiped out, and this is without the swarm. They're actually going, this is enough medic marines where they should be able to clean this army up. And I think that was the defiler that got irradiated in the background. So Nesh, once again, repelling machine. He did take out this hatchery. Single spore colony getting built, and he's going to be able to be able to pull back and keep that battle cruiser alive. Machine has established this mineral only. He, I don't think he really cares about minerals at this stage of the match. Really critically, what he needs is to take this 12 and get some gas. It looks like he's moving that drone in position to do so. This is a critical moment for Nesh, though. Whether he can establish his own six or whether he can more or less keep these, if he can keep 12 and six out of Machine's hands. That will win him the match. Or if he can get this marine ball and just somehow... Ca There's a lot of opportunities for him to win. I heard... I missed it. I heard a Yamato cannon someplace. I don't know where it happened, though. Apologies, everybody. I missed a Yamato. Somewhere there is a Yamato. We heard it. So we know the battle cruisers out there doing work. Big army of kind of a mix of Hydralisks, Zerglings... A little low on defilers. I don't see... Uh, okay, we do see one defiler kind of sneaking up here. I think Machine realizes this is the place where he needs to hold. And Nesh moving out. Finding that 12 o'clock, I don't think that's long for life. And it, yeah, Nesh having lots of opportunities to win this match. Lots of opportunities to disrupt. So instead, going to sneak up, irradiate some of these lurkers. And pushing up into this space. Machine trying to flank with some Zerglings. The Medic Marine's there to greet them, though, and I don't think this is a large enough attack force to deal with it. Now, finally getting that pincer maneuver, but I think Nesh got the better of that exchange initially, but a little bit slow to back up across the high ground, so that is going to be repelled. And he's able to take the hatchery out. And he's going to be able to, well, maybe with that SCV, take that 12 o'clock hatchery out. Plus, Siege Shank's now on the low ground, pressing forward, and, yeah, soft Ultralisks. This is anybody's game still. There's that battle cruiser. So I think he, I think what he Yamato'd here was the Spore Colony. I think that is where the Yamato happened. And this SCV is eventually going to kill that hatchery unless Machine does something about it. Nice defensive established position. Level 1 weapons on those siege tanks, which is going to just, which is splatting these poor Hydralisks that don't know what they're doing. Yeah, now, now able to take out. Ah, just kidding. Getting a couple free Marine kills. You see how quickly they killed them as well? That is the power of late cream Zerglings when you have level 3 weapons and that, that uh, Adrenal Grand's upgrade. A couple drones being produced, but it does not matter. They are being... That's kind of like the opposite novel, where it's like, I was in my egg, I was hatching for life. It's like the Terrans. The Terran are the overwhelming, powerful thing. Kind of the propaganda, the opposite side. Machine trying to find some sort of base. Nesh looking for opportunities to try to cap and breach, or at least establish a held position somewhere, and just dr slowly... I think this is Nesh's plan at this stage, which is, okay, we're just going to... Ooh! Losing Science Vessel there, and probably going to lose more... As he was trying to gather his two armies together at a kind of a meeting point, and instead neither is meeting up, and they're both kind of split, and it's oh, a critical mistake from Nesh. So he's going to end up losing his standing army. That is actually a big swing, because I think that is going to cause this 12 o'clock base to reopen. At the very least, that's going to allow Machine to establish that 6, I think. And this is where Machine now has a sizable standing army of high-tech units. And he might be able to get a position and flood in. Maybe re-disrupt this inside. I almost want to call this like the 8 o'clock. Nesh still mining. Let's go ahead and get a, a look at the bases here. Nesh controls 12. He hasn't established it yet. Machine is just now taking 6. He's got 3. That is producing. Upper right hand base is producing. His main is mined out. This... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Natural's not really been producing. He does have this machine, this uh, mineral only producing. Another eraser going in to disrupt mining in that upper right. Nice. Actually using... I like this play. So lost two drones, but not as many as he could have because he's using that Nidus to kind of sneak out of there. Let's see if these Hydralists are going to move in and take care of the... Ah, oh, defensive matrix on top of the Radiate. I love it. And he's going to get a slew of drone kills. Big swing from Nesh with that. 13 kills, 11 and 13, and I think that was mostly just drones. So what is that? Let's do math. 24? 24 kills between them. And that is going to force a complete round 
of eggs for a machine to be built nothing but drones and that is once again going to give Nesh an opportunity to yeah position gather his army kind of breathing room to establish everything he wants to establish and I'm wondering if he's going to use this opportunity to take 12 and deny this mineral only one siege tank ooh, a little bit out of position a little bit over eager they're going to lose one siege tank while they were not in the protective arms of those medic marines hydralisks though the swarm actually works against them with those siege tanks. Now the Ultralix moving in from the high ground should be able to clean this attack force up. And so I take it back where I thought Nesh was going to be able to get something accomplished. Instead, Machine with a nice pincer maneuver and some good army movement able to get right on top. And now he has the swing advantage once again, moving with his units. The Hydralis on top of the siege tank. Nice defensive matrix to provide a bit of delay. But this is a huge purple ball of a lot of units pushing in. Still these siege tanks on the high ground, keep in mind. So I'm not even sure Machine wants to engage this. I think he wants to just pull back. It looks like he does have a secondary attack of Ultralis disrupting the mineral only. Six o'clock base being... Wow, there's just action happening everywhere. Another battle, so two battle cruisers. Natural expansion still getting disrupted, although the gas was still being mined there. And that inside six, or the true six being disrupted. It looks like this base is going to get taken out at the nine. There is stuff happening all over the map. Just everywhere. Attacks, attacks, attacks. This is critical for Nesh to hold, and I think he's going to end up losing this base. The Zerglings continuing to flood across. They want SCVs. They are not going to get these SCVs. It does not look like. Science vessels flooding and want to try to radiate everything up here and then sneak right back out. They need to be careful that they don't get wiped out themselves. Looks like one SCV that was on a mining command getting uh, critically reshifted. Machine hoping he can retake that 12, but he's going to be greeted by a lot of Marines that can wipe him out. I assume this... This is enough of attack force, especially with the Irradiates. Maybe he's going to try to reestablish control from flank. Six o'clock base was taken out by that battle cruiser. So Machine once again in trouble. <clears throat> Actually, I'm not sure who's... Okay, let's let's uh, take a moment to re-gauge here. Mineral only is mining here. Mineral only is mining there. Upper left-hand base. I'm wondering if we saw a drop here. Upper left-hand base is looking thin for Nesh. Natural expansion is mined out. So Nesh is actually in a lot of trouble. This is basically his only mining base. He might be able to establish that and take it. Machine sitting on one, two, three bases that are sort of mining. This natural expansion is sort of mining. Machine needs to take an additional base. Okay, so he's taking that mineral only himself. If Machine can get in, get on top of this base, that will be all she wrote. I don't think he needs to worry about upper left anymore because that's mined out. So Nesh critically needs to think about either reestablishing the nine or reestablishing the nine or taking 12 and six. He does have a significant science vessel fleet. And it is going to be a war of attrition to the end. So many science vessels here. Beautiful radiates, but this is Hydralisks. And he needs to be very careful. If there was a plague right there, that might have been game. One plague could be... This is so tentative from either player. One mistake could shift the match. Nesh still with the supply count advantage. And a lot of that is in just this huge bulk of science vessels. And that, if Machine has no answer for these science vessels, that will be the game. That will be it. And I don't know what he's going to do. Because honestly, I feel like this is the factor that is going to win Nesh the game. Is just this huge count of science vessels. Able to wander across the map. Looks like these Ultralis is going to be able to engage. Some nice defensive matrix is going to push them back. The rest of these medic marines making a little bit of a movement. More medic marines diving into the natural expansion. This might be all she wrote. Nesh diving in, plus battle cruisers still disrupting that six o'clock base. So an attack here, plus an attack at the. At the and this, I think, this is the true attack. Looks like Machine had a couple ultralists to try to disrupt that, but I think this ultralist will get cleaned up. Plus this, yeah, that base is going to get disrupted. So Machine, while he was reinforcing his natural, not not wanting to lose that base, obviously, is going to end up losing his mineral only that was critical for him at this stage, because I think that was his only... So this mineral only is now his only mining base. So Nesh is still mining here. So Nesh is still mining here, here. Machine otherwise is only mining off one base, and that might be the swing that, that wins Nesh the match. Plus he's got this play advantage. Ultralists everywhere. Some medic marines have some trouble, leading them back into the siege tank line. Machine continuing to press forward. A nice defensive matrix across these siege tanks to make them more effective against these Ultralists, but now the Ultralists right on top of them, so they should be able to clean that attack force up. Science Vessel's still up in the air. Hydralist's not able to get up on top of them. Machine needs to regather here and do something. These battle cruisers are still alive somehow. How many kills do they have? Okay, I think these are two new battle cruisers because a different kill count. Wasn't able to keep full track of them. Hydralist getting killed in... I gotta say, at this stage, Machine needs to be careful, but... Oh, he's gonna get on top of this mining base! 
And it looks like he's going to be able to wipe it out. Is he going to get the SCVs as well? No. Is he going to just be able to power down that command center? Irradiate on that Defiler. Plus these tanks. And he got a plague! Oh no! There's a plague across a lot of those science vessels. And again, that was critical. You can see the, how desperate Nesh is to keep this command center alive. He is group repairing Medic Marine, but they are these Hydralisks are sitting on Dart Swarm. That Firebats do not care. I love that visual effect. The Firebat should be able to clean these Hydralisks up, so Nesh will be able to hold. But in... Wow! Critically! This fist getting taken out. Machine diving in to the natural expansion of Nesh while he was out of position distracted by that. Will this be it? Machine needs to get... I think Machine's all in at this stage, to be honest. Battlecruiser's moving in his natural expansion. Some Scourge looking to clean that up. Insanity all over the map. It is still anyone's game. I think these Medic Marine block should be able to clean up what's here. Yeah, I think they're going to be able to plug here. So I don't think... And plus these Battle Cruisers should be able to finish things off. Hydralis finally able to wipe out what's ha happening at this natural expansion. Medic Marine's pushing up. Going to keep... Uh, uh, now, yeah, Machine's distance mining. Nesh in a huge commanding position. He's got a huge bank. He's still got Medic Marines around the... Uh, around the map. He's still got 12 o'clock base. That's an option. Looks like he is going to end up losing this 9 o'clock base that he was hoping to establish. Hydralis... Oh, maybe not. Maybe if he can get an SCV there to repair, but SCV is going to get a little bit irradiated along the way. Yeah, they need to repair that. Okay, yeah. Going to be able to repair and establish. Machine needs to get something accomplished. He's got half the supply of Nesh at this stage, and I think Nesh is going to be able to swing this back around. We'll see. Might have seen a drop. I think there's just an Overlord to scout. I don't think that was a drop. Because I don't see any damage back here. More battle cruisers and science vessels being created. More. This is an, a crazy game. More battle cruisers being moved out to this natural expansion to cause more disruption there. Machine grouping up for another attack, but it looks like all of these science vessels. He needs to be careful with them because again, uh, hits another two with plague. Kind of a double plague. I'm not sure how much that is that's going to accomplish. Ness losing this nine o'clock base once again. Machine, distance mining, and establishing this base. The science vessel is going to see that. It needs to be careful. Irradiated Ultralisks actually might help kill those SCVs as they're running alongside and doing that irradiation damage. Nesh needs to hold this. And Machine needs to back off because his army spread a little bit thin. Let's see if he can get a, some Hydralisks to finish off that base. Looks like some science vessels is looking to dive in and maybe irradiate them if they can. But keep in mind they're low on health, so that could be scary if they do. So machine running all around the map. It is he's gotta do something to to repel Nesh. Nesh holding the six o'clock, denying that. Holding the twelve o'clock, denying that. Mineral only mining for machine. He's still got that three o'clock, but it is looking very, very thin. Nesh still with a sizable bank. I'm not sure where machine is finding these minerals from, to be honest. Very low on gas as well, so he's not gonna have Ultralist for long. So yeah, that's he's hoping to take this six o'clock. He needs to clear this out. He has to dive in with this and clear out these medic marines so he can establish it himself and deny it to Nesh. It's kind of like when you're taking bases now, you're also keeping them from their opponent. Able to wipe out that, that battle cruiser. Looks like he was able to kill the command center at the nine o'clock base. I don't think that's a game winning maneuver at this stage. There's a lot of work to be done still for that. Now the medic marine's starting to move out. They're thinking, okay, now we've got a soft underside where machine's out of position. So maybe we can go ahead and take this base out again. Reinforcements trying to flood back up. And is this hatchery going to get taken out again? I think this is going to be the third time this hatchery is taken out, if that is the case. Defensive Matrix, are we seeing Focus Fire? It's going to be close. Plague. Hydralis, one science vessel getting taken out. I think it's going to stay. I think, yeah, hatchery survives. More attack across the middle of the map as I think Nesh is trying to reinforce. But that is more Medic Marines, and it looks like Nesh is getting caught out of position. So Machine, once again, able to establish some map control. And now Nash is in trouble because he has not been able to establish 6 or 12. Trying to reestablish 9. He's only mining at this base, which is mineral only. And Machine has a standing army somehow. Where did he find this army? Where did he get the minerals for this? Still, and I'm not sure that he should engage here, to be honest. This is a lot of medic marines. Maybe, yeah, okay, he's going to back out. Just make sure he denies the 9. Go ahead and take, yeah, I say go ahead and take 12. Go ahead and take 6. And just continue to deny those bases. A couple SCVs vacantly getting wiped out. Holy cow. Some more Medic Marines. Some more Siege Shanks. This is a lot of Siege Shanks to hold this. But I feel like Nesh is so spread out. Machine spread out. Good Plague actually able to wipe things out. And that Science Vessel count was just dwindled through just Plagues and Hydralisks able to wipe... Oh, he needs to be careful with this one. 
as well that these Hydalisks don't just turn around. Okay, trying to get... He does get in Radiate on the Defiler. Machine does take it out, though, and I don't feel... Even though he was able to take, uh, take out a Defiler and get in Radiate on an Ultralisk, I, I still feel like that's a win for Machine overall. More... Okay, does have more Science Vessels out in the field. Machine trying to take the 6, trying to take... Maybe take the 12? We'll still see if he takes that 12 momentarily. Nesh has a Medic Marine Ball that he could use to try to take this out, but he needs, he's in a very precarious position. Both players kind of precarious positions either direction. Science Vessel Count is what will get it done for Nash. He's moving up, going to go ahead and wipe out these Zerglings at the 12. Maybe he can get that base. Science Vessels are radiating Zerglings as they're distance mining here at 6. Now here's the thing. Okay, canceling that hatchery. Is he just... I see a lot of units flooding through. They're going to try to wipe out what's there at 12. Both players... Any move could win... Oh, that'll end up losing in the match. Nash has the high ground here. If he can plug the high ground. And that could be a game-winning maneuver. Irradiate. Ultra's trying to move up. Good plague on the high ground. Oh, goodness. That is a huge plague. Because he also he catches all the science vessels. And that might be the maneuver that wins Machine this match. We will have to see. He might be able to capitalize on this. Because this is a lot of supply that is basically nullified at this stage. Hydralis is engaging Medic Marines. But they do have level 3 weapons. Which makes them a little bit more effective than they would be otherwise. But that still is, yeah, disadvantage for Hydalus. Nesh has been able to establish nine. Ultralis peeling up, getting on top of those science vessels, wiping several of them out with those Hydralisks. Cleaning that out, but this isn't a mining base yet. Keep in mind, Machine was able to keep this base up, so he is mining there. This is an insane match. More science vessels getting taken out. Yeah, I think that might be it. I think that might be it. I think that was the swing. We will see. The rest of the Medic Marines getting wiped out in that corner, but... It's up to Machine to capitalize on it to finish this map. Nesh feeling it. He's like, my science vessels are gone. I got to do something now. I'm moving in with all my siege tanks. All my marines are radiating. A lot of drones. That's going to disrupt a lot of supply for Machine. That's his economy slightly wrecked. Because keep in mind, this is his only mining base. But a counterattack to the 9 o'clock to disrupt what M Nesh was mining. He might be able to sweep around and take that base as well. So it is going to be a base race. Towards the end of this, this is nuts. Machine peeling back out. Is he going to go for it? He might. Okay, just this Ultralisk and these Zerglings might be able to take this base out. Nesh, Nesh is no longer mining. Neither player... Okay, Machine's barely mining at three. Otherwise, neither player is mining. Nuts. Sea Shanks and Marines on the high ground trying to deny that. Machine with kind of a skeleton crew of Hydralisk Ultralisks. Some Marines moving across, so it's going to be all down to micro and positioning here. Two Science Vessels up in the air. I do not see a Defiler on the ground. Machine cannot afford to lose these. Oh, okay, now gathering. Good engagement right there. Secondary engagement with Ultras on top of Marines, which is not what he wanted, but the rest of this attack force getting wiped out. And I think that's going to give positional control to Machine, where he can reestablish this base, but do I don't think he has minerals to rebuild. He's got to do it with the... the Units he has on the ground, does he even have enough minerals to get another bait? He, he'd have to distance mine. He's got a distance mine with it. But Nash also getting his supply wiped out. He's going to try to distance mine outside of this inside 11 o'clock. Or what is this base? 12, 11? Yeah, inside 11 o'clock base. This base, guys. This base. He's got a mine out of that base. And plus there's siege tanks at the high ground. He's still, Okay, what does Nash have? He's got this medic marine force here. He's behind in supply overall. Machine just, with the science, oh, lost that science vessel. Not worth it. Battlecruiser trying to make his way. Distance mining again. How many times has Machine been distance mining to keep himself in this match? Okay, here's the advantage though. Nesh is actually truly mining here. Actually mining. At that base. <laughs> wow. That was overkill. Let's see if this Battlecruiser gets wiped out. Honestly, I'm not sure Nesh wanted to... I don't think that's the trade Nesh wanted. Machine is finding units out of nowhere. I, Considering he has, like, no bases, where is he getting these units? Where? Another attack force moving up, and this is a dangerous situation for Nesh, because he might get pincered between these two attack forces. It looks like that is the case. Hydralis and Ultralis from behind. Hydralis from above. One science vessel died. We could hear that sound effect. And Ultralis on top of the Medic Marines, and I think this is going to translate... I think this is going to translate into a machine victory. All he has to do is walk into this 11 o'clock, deny that base, or even establish this... Oh, this is cute. Using a bear. I like that maneuver. Going to uh, just 
deny the space with the physical <laughs> the physical barracks. Irradiate right there. Needs to be he needs to baby these science vessels though and keep them away the, from these hydralisks. More units. Where is Nesh getting these minerals now? I feel like both these guys with their macro, I'm like, where are they? Like every time I look in the upper end corner, these are like very small numbers for this this stage of the game. But every time I look on the map, they've just got units out of nowhere. So cheers to these guys. Zerglings gonna get cleaned up. A little bit too late to try to take this. I think these medic marines in the high ground. Well, I don't see any siege tanks there, so it's possible with a sizable force they should be able to clean things up. Machine feeling safe enough to go ahead and establish that hatchery finally. Kind of cute building a marine to deal to be with those medic marines with the stim right there. I hear siege. So these siege tanks being pulled off, they need to be on the front lines. Nash critically repairing these science vessels. That could be the difference between victory and defeat. Both players licking their wounds and waiting for what I'm going to call probably the last hurrah between them. And really what it's going to be over is can either player hold their bases or take the 6 or the 12. And rest some sort of map control. And right now, Machine relying mostly on looks like Hydralisk Defiler with a handful of Ultralisk. He just hasn't had gas to get Ultralisks out. It's going to come down to micromanagement. Unfortunately for Nash, I feel like a lot of these attack forces would be much better suited if they're groups, but they were machines done fantastic army movement to have a lot of another good plague. Oh my goodness. Missed the science vessels though. That was critical. Wandering out, getting all of the defilers, but also getting plagued in turn. I don't know whose match this is, because without the defilers versus medic marines, these hydralisks are very exposed. But plague hitting all of these science vessels, that could be the shift in the match as well. I'm wondering if it's just going to come down to the fact that this base still has minerals where this base is starting to get thin. Six o'clock base, it uh, looks like an overlord was sitting there at the 12 o'clock, so both players can keep an eye. Still anybody's match, ladies and gentlemen. And everyone else in between. Still anybody's match. Hydralisk, Zerglings, Nesh desperately trying to keep an eye on Machine's troop position. Machine continuing to flood out Zerglings. Keep in mind, this is where Zerglings with level 3 armor, level 3 carapace, and the and the adrenal gland upgrades can be really scary against medic marine forces, even without swarm. Machine just trying to use this high ground, defend this base, and I think he realizes the situation he, he's in. It's like, okay, as long as I deny these bases to Nash, this has more minerals and I will win eventually, I think. I think that's the position he knows he's in at this stage. At least that's what I kind of gauge from that. And, oh, needs to be careful of those science vessels once again. But Nesh did repair them. So Nesh going to just try to sneak in. He needs to be very, very careful with this. How close are we to mining out? I think, so yeah, we are basically mined out now for Nesh. Nesh has no bases to speak of. So Machine has eyes on 9. He has eyes on 12. 6 o'clock base. Maybe could get taken. There are a couple units nearby that can keep an eye on that. Sometime in the near future, we have another Defiler out for Machine. Two Defilers, which is scary. A couple Scourge in the air. More Science Vessels moving out. I think they were hoping to maybe do... I don't know what they're going to do here. Oh, Irradiating. Trying to irradiate Scourge is not the situation you want to be in. Getting another hit. Getting a good irradiate there. I'm almost wondering if Burrow would be a good upgrade. Trying to peel off that one drone. Losing two drones as a result. Is going to escape... Every bit of resources counts here, so can't so even losing these these scourge are costly. It looks like he's going to use it to try to scout instead. Both players looking for an opportunity. Machine now swinging around, going to dive into the six o'clock base to try to reestablish it. But Nesh going to go ahead and try to move up to his nine. So attack and counterattack, and that is going to be it for the six. Is yeah, going to be able to clear out that nine o'clock base. But I still feel like this is an overall win for Machine. If he can get, if he can actually truly establish the space. He's, you can almost feel like with the movement around the map, Machine has a superior supply count. He's feeling good. He is gathering up. This is going to be careful because it's going to come down to positioning as to where the units are. Nesh now distance mining. So if Nesh can dive in, take this base out in kind of a counterattack, maybe that will win them the match. If Machine can somehow go up to disrupt the 9, that may be one in the match. We'll see. Engaging the Filer, able to get a good plague down. That's going to be a trigger for Machine to want to engage. A couple Zerglings and a couple stray units getting killed. And again, that's critical units lost. 
things swing back into Nesh's favor because he does not have the nine established and between the th and also just peeking in with these science vessels irradiating these units if he continues to do this he will win the match overall he's picking but yeah i think Nesh might have this now and i know i've said it back and forth losing yeah able to wipe out a lot of drones of machine machine has a larger bank somehow i don't know how but has a larger bank somehow but as long as Nesh can keep doing this, just going in, threatening this base, pushing things back, continuing to irradiate those drones, continuing to kind of sneak back and forth, Scourge trying to trail things back. And as long as Nesh can keep this base up and make sure that it doesn't get killed, he'll be okay. Science Vessel's deep in enemy territory, irradiating everything. And with everything out of position, Nesh pushing up. Oh, this is going to be critical. Pushing up gonna try to take this hatchery out good plague so that's gonna get repelled to the science vessels yeah science vessels eating some damage here six o'clock base was once again re at least it's been denied machine 12 o'clock base there's a drone waiting to take it but machine is i think is waiting for it until he has map control once again supply count just about even and nesh Pushing these hydralisks back, this is this is nuts. I have no idea whose game it is, I'm going to be honest. Machine trying to take that... Ha Machine actually out of resources, I think. Trying to take that 12. Isn't going to be able to hold it. I'm going to swing this back to Nesh. Because Nesh able to wipe that hatchery out. Machine did not cancel it and he really needed... Well, maybe he did. Needed to get that, those resources back. He only has a handful of minerals to reestablish an additional base. And he's really got only these units to do it with. And Nesh has done a fantastic job of annihilating the 12 and the 6 and holding the 9. So now Machine trying to flood him with just pure Zerglings. Also moving up with an attack force. I think, yeah, this might be the last raw. I think this is the desperation attack from Machine realizing his situation. Maybe he can micro his way out of this. Oh, Defiler getting irradiated in the back corner. Siege tanks on top of, though. That siege tank's wiped out. Machine still has a standing army. So he is not out of this yet. Science Vessels again trying to sneak back in. If they can irradiate some of these drones while the rest of these units are out of position, that could be it. But Machine swinging around, if he can attack 9 somehow and deal with that, that might be it. Oh, I think this might be the, the game sealer, though. If Nesh can just get an irradiator to and wipe out this attack force at the 9 o'clock base, that will be the game for Machine. There's the irradiates going for Eraser. Double irradiate. Yeah, it's going to wipe that out. And I think that's it. I think that is going to be GG. Wow, what a game. Because Machine has no... I don't think he can even build a drone here. All he's got is... Yeah, lost all of his drones. That's GG. What a game. Machine just has a sliver of attack force. He's going to hit that with it. He's got an attack force, but he, has, he doesn't have any drones that I see. He has no drones, so he can't even mine to reestablish any sort of units. It's at lower supply than Nesh. Nesh is still mining at 9 o'clock. So he's got a maybe sneak. Yeah, I think that's it. Are there drones? Okay, there's some drones he could pull off gas, maybe, to try to get minerals back together. Yeah, he'd have. And in the meantime, yeah, he, bis he wouldn't be mining anything. He's at 49 supply. Nesh is at 86. Still medic marines here. So if Machine's going to win it, he's got to do it with just the units he has on the ground. And I think. Nesh feels that, so he's starting to distance mine a little bit. Oh, poor lone medic. Poor lone medic. What are you doing out there? Zergling getting killed, so that's one Zergling down. And I wish I had, like, a counter in the upper right-hand corner here of, like, Zergling's left. N Brilliant maneuver blocking the ramp. Realizing the situation, blocking the ramp there to wipe this Zergling medic marine force out. Ultralisks and Hydralisks swing from the opposite corner. But Nesh with a nice defensive stance. That was a great read from Nesh. SEV's trying to do some disruption and linebacker there, and that is going to be it. There's GG. Wow! Great game from both these players. That was a fun one to cast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. GG. Well played by both guys, I gotta say. Incredible. Incredible. Also, I would like to point out that every single time I have casted matches up to this stage. This is almost like a spoiler for other things. Every single time I've casted matches up to this stage, whenever someone has sent me a replay, 
it is usually almost 100% of the time, I'm trying to think if there's ever a case where it wasn't, outside of like a tournament or something like that, it has been the player sending me the replay who wins the match oftentimes. And usually I have to kind of like do like a mental block. Machine sent me this replay. So kudos to Machine. That's that's the type of guy he is. He will send himself a replay of a hard-fought loss. Uh, I actually wanted to... I, I won't, I'll just, I won't discuss that at the end of this because this was a long enough match as it was. Woo! Good one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.